Thank you, sir. Good evening. This meeting of the East Ridge Planning Commission will now come to order for July the 10th, 2023. Ms. Mahoney, roll call, please. Chairperson Tuggle. Here. Vice Chairperson Howe. Here. Commission Member Cornelius. Here. Commission Member Williams. Here. Commission Member Witt. Thank you, and I trust everyone's had a, a moment to review the minutes from the June 5th, 2023 meeting, and I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. We have a motion to approve from Commission Member Witt and a second from Vice Chairperson Howe. Ms. Mahoney, roll call, please. Vice Chairperson Howe? Yes. Commission Member Cornelius? I abstain. I was absent from the meeting. Commission Member Williams? Yes. Commission Member Witt? Yes. Chairperson Tuggle? Yes. Okay, there is an item for communication and comments by the public. Uh, we will have any members of the public who want to speak on these um, topics. If you want to approach the lectern, um, make sure you adjust the microphone because we record these. And if you can give your name and your address, please. And if you can keep your comments to two minutes, give everybody a chance to get heard. We can, uh, we can begin that process if you'd like. Okay. All right, nobody's in a rush. We'll give you a moment to, uh, once we go through each item, if you want to do that then. There is no old business, so we'll continue to new business. The first item is the request of Stone Creek Consulting LLC, Alan Jones, to have the properties located at 636 and 650 Layfield Road, tax map ID 170JB004.04, and tax map ID number 170JB004.05, rezoned from R1 Residential District to R3 Residential Apartment District. Mr. Howell. Yes, members of the Planning Commission. So this rezone would be from R1 Residential to R3 Apartment District. Uh, would be to utilize the parcel in accordance with the Tennessee Condominium Act, uh, building five townhomes, detached single family units on the parcel. Uh, the proposed residential density for this development is 9.343 dwelling units per acre for the townhomes. The adjacent density consists of 2.55 dwelling uni units for the adjacent single family dwellings and 14.2 dwelling units per acre for the adjacent multifamily use. Uh, the proposed five units would have parking at the rear of the property. No individual driveways will be on Layfield, would consist of one drive entrance for all five units. RPA had no concerns with adjacent land uses, development form or location, lighting or height for the proposed R3 rezone. Uh, this rezone is identical, if you remember, to the 2023 rezone of the adjacent parcels 664, 678, and 692 Layfield that was approved by the Planning Commission and City Council with conditions to allow residential condos or townhomes to be constructed on the R3 parcel if approved. And that being a restriction to prevent apartments, but just That's allow correct. condos. Thank you. Okay. And I see the RPA. Does uh, city staff have any recommendation? I'm sorry. Does the city staff have any recommendation? It, it fits what the district requires for that R3, so it does meet all the requirements of it. So it would be, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, and if uh, anyone from the applicant would like to come up and speak concerning the request. Yes, thank you. If you don't mind giving your name and address, please. Hello, Hello I'm Matt Marsh with uh, EPG Homes, so mm -hmm. I'm filling in for Alan Jones today. He's out of town. But uh, <clears throat> this project is sandwiched between two multifamily properties to so the east and west. This site is also surrounded by an underdeveloped piece of property that is also owned by the developer. Since there are single-family homes to the north, we would think it is important to limit the housing type to single-family detached homes or townhomes. This site plan is illustrating single-family detached homes in the event it is developed as a standalone project. Travis, trash service will be provided along the entry drive and fire service can access the homes from Layfield Road or from the rear if necessary. We are providing one garage space and one surface parking space for each unit so that we meet the two car garage per unit requirement. We are suggesting two conditions to go along with this rezone request which will help this site as a transition between the surrounding multifamily with the single family to the north. Those conditions are only single-family detached or townhomes shall be allowed. 
And the other condition is no individual driveways allowed on Layfield. Got it. So you're, you're amenable to a restriction that would allow just townhomes or condos on that property? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thank you very much. We may call you back in a moment. Yep. And if there's anybody who would like to speak in opposition to the request, feel free to approach. Not seeing anyone, I will entertain a motion. A motion to approve. Oh, I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to approve from Commission Member Cornelius and a second from Commission Member Williams. Ms. Mahoney, can I get a roll call, please? Vice Chairperson Howe. One, I'm sorry, you want to discuss first? Yes, please. Please, and then. Yes. Sorry about that. My mistake. I got a little too quick on the draw. Worries. Commission Member Williams would like to discuss. Um, what size homes are you looking at on this? If you don't mind returning. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is, uh, walk back up. It's on a recording, so if you don't mind coming back. What size are these uh, single family townhomes? Just uh, three bedroom, around 12 thir to 1,300 square feet. Okay, great. Same and that we're doing at Black Hot Commons. And they're two story or three? Yeah, two, two story. Got it. Garbage. Is that do you gonna have a container or is it gonna be you're gonna be using city services for the container or are you gonna have actually a dumpster for the I hate to make you do this, but since it's recorded, can you come up here and say that again, please, for oh, the nice. for the microphone? And if you don't mind giving your name and address too. My name is Evan Green. My address is nineteen oh six Rossville Avenue, Chattanooga. Thank you. Um at Blackhawk Commons, we signed a agreement with the city, even though it'll be a private drive, to um, for them to access trash service there. So we're planning to do the same thing at this property. So are they actually pulling in and having to back out? Um, there's a T. There's a T. Yeah. So they're going to do can they do in the same you said with yeah. Asa. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Asa's working on. It. I think there'll be a T, maybe even two different T's in this specific location. There's an, uh, previous owners of the property um, had um, tried to which they couldn't do, abandoned the easement that was there that leads to um, some property at the back for Mr. Williams. And we talked to him, and we're going to uh, put our private drive on that easement that we have and that he also is entitled to, and it'll help him be able to um, connect to it without paving as much. Okay. Awesome. That's all I had. I have a problem with the density, with how small the lots are and how much we're putting on there. That's not an issue with the city? Well, this lot in itself, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it's over an acre or two, right? Yeah, I think it's like one point. This one specifically is over an acre, I believe. Yeah, I think the density was right between. between four townhouses? Uh, I think this one has five townhouses. Five, so right. It actually has, le the density is very comparable to um, the townhouse that's across the street and the townhouses, the single family detached houses that we're building at um, Hummingbird Village on Crawley. So it's just a different layout. So um, yeah, that's the biggest concern I have is that we're just putting so many houses or townhomes and everything in a in a small lot. And Lakefield is not a big road, so and then we're putting more on Frawley Road. So. I, I, I totally understand that. Uh, per our city our city <laughs> ordinances on the uh, R T one those lots, I mean, your minimum size lot for an RT1 is 18 feet. Minimum build site is only 1,350 square feet. City ordinance, basically what that says is these fit. These fit that density, that's that property. So without changing our requirements for the zoning regulations, these work. Yeah, and I believe you said the density was about 9, um, and, it was, and it's 14 for the R3 that's adjoining. So it's halfway in between the R1 and the R3. And these will be for sale units, so we're trying to hit a certain price point here, and which is kind of why the density comes in. We're hoping to be under, the starting out in the whole development be at 250, 260, and also I think that we might max out on these with the basement at 320. It's, I mean, it's, it's as affordable as we can. I, I bought my first house here in Eastridge um, in 2009, and I was able to buy it at the time for, I think it was $80,000, you know, and now, there's just nothing available for people that are just starting out. Um, unfortunately, with the lot prices we're having to pay down the road, which are now $68,000 for the single family houses, it's possible to build an affordable product there. So we're really kind of doing this to try to get more 
people at my age and younger to be able to get there won't be rentals they're not going to be they are for sale and there's five of them on that one a little over an acre yeah um well it's one parcel i think there's two there's two there's it was two lots initially two lots. and we're going to abandon the one lot so um asa is working on the exact layout so these this shows if it's going to be a standalone project then being five detached units we talked about um potentially making them townhouses that like the ones across the street that are attached but yeah okay. we've also met with the neighbors um, at a community meeting all their concerns about the one drive they really didn't want a lot of driveways on layfield talk to them and i think everybody's in agreement that what we're doing will be better than what's there now which is just a mosquito pit i appreciate you thank doing you. a community meeting that's great yeah. thank you thank you makes it a little easier for us okay we have a motion in a second um to approve we get a, a roll call please vice chairperson how yes commission member cornelius yes commission member williams yes commission member witt no chairperson tuggle yes Okay, that motion will carry. And the second item is the request of Michael Myers to have the properties located at parts of 861 Donaldson Road and all of 865 Donaldson Road. Parts of tax map ID number 156LC012.01 and all of tax map ID 156LC013 rezoned from R1 residential district to RT1 residential townhouse district. Mr. Howell. Yes, member of the Planning Commission, uh, as you stated, this rezone is from R1 single family to RT1 townhome district uh, to construct four attached townhomes on 0 0.36 acres with a proposed density of 11.11 .11 dwelling units per acre. Adjacent density is currently 8.33 dwelling units per acre. Uh, the site is surrounded by single family residential, multifamily residential, and two family dwelling, uh, residential units. Current development form includes small suburban lots and larger lots with multifamily. Uh, RPA had no concerns with location, lighting, or height. Uh, sh the site plan shows two entrances to access the townhomes with a private drive running parallel to the townhomes to access two lots to the west of the property where two single-family dwellings will be constructed. Uh, going from an R1 to an RT1, this would be considered a down zone due to the amount of uses that are allowed in the RT1. Uh, allows currently uh, currently R1 district allows for 16 uses both permitted and uses on review while the RT1 district allows for nine permitted uses and uses on review thank you mm -hmm. and this does the staff have a recommendation once again this uh, I, I know Miss Witts <laughs> doesn't like the density uh, that's, you know, as we all know, East Ridge is the most popularly, uh, dense, densely populated city in the entire state of Tennessee. Sure. Uh, I know bringing in a lot of this stuff, a lot of people frown upon. This does meet the requirements of the RT1. Uh, I, you know, at that point, I have no other thing to, to say approval of it. And I believe that was the intention of RT1. I remember when we created that, that was to increase density. And a representative from the applicant, name and address, please. Yes, sir. Mike Price, MAP Engineers, 7380 Applegate Lane, uh, Chattanooga. Uh, do members of the commission have this drawing? Let's check. Yes. Smaller version. Yes, we yes. do. We have the small version. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, so Mr. Myers is requesting the ability to construct uh, these four townhomes uh, that you see here. We've um, also looked at it in terms of providing landscaping, which uh, joining our neighbors uh, we think is appropriate and commensurate with reducing the, uh, the impacts with our development. We've also looked at stormwater and, and looked at putting a, a detention facility behind here. There's sort of a draw that comes through here so that we can ameliorate the, uh, the runoff so that we don't have any increases as it relates to what occurs downstream. Uh, each of these townhomes will have a single car garage with also parking on one side or off to the side so and you could park in front of the garage so technically there's three parking spaces in front of each townhome if you will uh, so there uh, in listening to the discussion with the last case I know density was was one of the 
concerns that was discussed. I would point out that we could have rezoned the entire property, which would have reduced the overall zoning number with what we're asking in the RT1, but we didn't feel that that was appropriate because that wasn't our intent. Our intent was to do the two single family homes there in the back and put the town homes in the front. So when you look at the numbers, yes, we are at 11.1 units per acre for the RT1, but we're also at, at units, you know, we're at two units per acre or thereabouts, a little less as it relates to the single family. So if you really sort of combine the two, you can see we didn't try to max out uh, in through here. We simply try to fit in what we thought was appropriate in the neighborhood. Um, we do see that uh, in terms of garbage service that we would put a community uh, little area where people can keep their cans in, drop their trash in, pull it out on trash day, then drop it back in. I didn't show it on the plan, but that was basically our intent is to use city services for that, but to keep the, the garbage cans where you don't have to keep them in the garage, but you actually would place them in a community area that would be blocked in and screened off so that it's not an eyesore, not sort of just stuck out on a pad, if you will, but would be blocked in with like a four foot high uh, block uh, wall type of, uh, of a situation there to, to screen those off. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. That's basically it in a nutshell, I think. Uh, these are for sale, uh, by the way, not for rent. Uh, and as it about rents. how much in square footage? So each of these is uh, roughly about uh, 800 square feet to the floor plate, and uh, we're looking at two stories. So I think you're going to be somewhere in that 13, 1400 square footage uh, once you take out the garage. Uh, so somewhere about in that, that realm. Thank you. And Mr. Howell, the way that the uh, request is written, would it include the landscape buffer automatically? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion from the Planning Commission? I still have a problem with the density and the road that it's on. Donaldson is not a road that can carry a lot of traffic and stuff. So the more density you put on that road, that's my big one. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. And if there's anybody from the audience who would like to uh, speak either in favor or opposition, feel free. Uh, Mr. Howell, would you mind helping him with the microphone, please? If you can provide your name and address, please. Yes. My name is Robert Pyle. I'm an attorney, a retired attorney. I live about a block away, 3524 Pinellas Lane. Okay. The thing, uh, we have tried to get a copy of the information uh, that the application and we have been frustrated about that. Uh, I did put in a written application for that uh, today, and I've been told it will be a week before I will be allowed to see the information on there. It was my impression that this is a matter of public record, and I should be allowed to see it. But I've been told, no, there's some private information in there. They're going to have to... Uh, uh, Redact, right. Redact some things, and uh, so it will be at least a week before I get to see the information to determine uh, whether or not I have objections to this. The things that concern me immediately, just from the presentation out uh, here, the, the place where the, this, this, uh, proposed project is, first of all, if you stand on the proposed project where they're going to be putting four townhouses in, absolutely everything that you view to the east of that is single family dwellings, mm -hmm. single houses on a lot. Everything between there and Germantown, single family. There's no, I, I don't think there's even a duplex in that area. And I don't think that this is an improvement to the neighborhood at all. Sure. And I'd be very concerned 
about the the downward movement of the neighborhood in doing that. I understand. Thank you. Um, and I'm concerned. I I don't think they're going to handle the uh, runoff situation. I'm I'm concerned about what they're doing to the density, the change in density to that neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, which is a pleasant uh, single-family neighborhood, basically. Now, going up the hill, there are there are apartments. Uh, up the hill, there are there is a, a greater density. You go down the hill to the east, it's all single family. Everything you can see from that property is single family. Sure. And so I'm, at this moment, from what I can see, I'm opposed to it. And uh, I'd like to make sure I see all the documents before I change that position. Sure. So just to um, allay your concerns a little bit, we if we approve this in the Planning Commission, it moves on to two readings at the City Council. So it will be about a, at least a month before anything is decided finally on this property. Uh, the Planning Commission certainly does uh, make a, a, whether we approve whether or not it moves to the Planning, I mean, I'm sorry, to the City Council for their approval, but ultimately the final decisions are made by the City Council, so you'll have ample time before that for feedback at the Council meetings. And I know there are at least three Council members in this room because I can see them, so I'm sure they've heard your concerns as well. So, thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is Barbara Kelly, and I live on Pinellas Road, 3524 Pinellas Road, which is down the street from this. I travel up and down. Uh, Pinellas Lane is a little L-shaped street that uh, on one end is Catholic Lane and the other lane side is, on the other side is Donaldson. So I'm up and down often on Donaldson and that is a narrow road. Uh, you are dealing with hills in there and the narrowness and this is, this is not in a good location where this proposed development is with, with Gleason um, and Kathy coming right up there with Pinellas and it's gonna be right in the middle there and you're adding the potential, I heard him say, you could have three parking spaces for each of these homes. I can't imagine 12 more cards in there and adding the in and out and in and out. So, Plus, like you talked about the drainage, behind Donaldson, up the hill, if you go around on Gleason, you'll come to a big apartment complex way up on top of that hill that is being remodeled and redone. But this property on Donaldson, the big apartment complex is up there. There's tremendous water that comes down from there. And he's talking about the drainage. Well, it's going to be whooshing down and uh, I'm, I've got real concerns about that. Plus the crowding uh, that's already, there's too much. Anyway, those are my concerns and I will, um, it's too much traffic, adding way too much traffic on Donaldson. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? All right, and if somebody from the applicant would like to um, address some of those concerns, specifically around water abatement would probably be the most helpful. Uh, let me do this first, if I might. Might help speed up the process a little bit, thank well, you. Well, yeah, and, and again, we, we certainly wanna, I, I wasn't aware of any requests, but uh, certainly any information that after this meeting or if he wants to contact my office, he's more than welcome. We'll, give him whatever information that he may, uh, Mr. Powell may want. Uh, so we have looked at storm drainage and contours. That's the reason we show the pond where we do uh, in here, because we know there is a draw. We do recognize the fact that we do have apartments behind us. And so that's why we're trying to take that into account to deal with the runoff so that we did not end up with an increase leaving our site as a result of what we're looking at developing. 
what I typically find a lot of times with uh, smaller type developments like this is you don't have enough parking. And if I don't have enough parking on the site, where are people going to park? They're going to park out on the street. It's just the reality. So we tried to intentionally look at parking in a manner to be responsible to provide enough spaces, not just two as a minimum, but reality wise, you could do three in the event that you've got guests or if some of your neighbors uh, have a guest. So that's, that's part of the reason that we, we did what we did as it relates to the parking in through here. And then I believe Mr. Myers has some, uh, I think some comments that he'd like to make to the commission, if that's all right. Sure, if you don't mind giving your name and address, please. Yes, my first name is Roby, last name Myers, I go by Mike. I live on Signal Mountain, 201 Clegg Street. Uh, just wanted to mention, you know, I've been vested in East Ridge uh, since the mid-70s. Um, I owned and built uh, duplexes on McBrien Road, and then the duplexes that are adjacent to this property I built in 1986, and I lived on Donaldson Road for eight years. Uh, it's a wonderful neighborhood. The apartment complex that has been mentioned at the top of my property has been there over 50 years. And, you know, we're not creating any new water. Uh, the water has been there. It's been taken care of for years and years. There's not been a problem with runoff. And I'm sure you're aware that uh, the apartments are currently under reconstruction. Uh, I don't know who's doing that. And I don't know the the project itself, but we did drive through there a few, uh, you know, a couple hours ago, and it's going to be a higher end uh, project than has been there before. So uh, the the whole neighborhood is, is dramatically changing. Uh, the apartment, the the duplexes that I built and lived in, have been completely renovated by the owner. Has done a wonderful job. So what we're seeing is an upper scale movement in that neighborhood because of the fact that. The people are taking pride in the houses and the duplexes that are being owned and we're going to continue that and make sure this project is going to be on the upper scale and I'd be glad to answer any questions or Mike uh, would be glad to answer any questions great thank you very much any further discussion okay I will entertain a motion to approve, amend, or deny. I make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Okay. We have a motion to approve by Commission Member Howe and a second from Commission Member Cornelius. Any further discussion? Commission Member Williams? No? Okay. Roll call, please. Vice Chairperson Howe? Yes. Commission Member Cornelius? Yes. Commission Member Williams? No. Commission Member Witt? No. Chairperson Tuggle? Yes. Okay, so this will move to the City Council for two readings. And as I said, there will be ample opportunity to discuss that prior. The main job of the Planning Commission is to determine whether or not the land use fits the surrounding uses and whether it's permissible, not necessarily the content of what goes on it. We ask mostly content for the benefit of the audience and neighbors to understand what's happening. So feel free to share your feedback at the city council meetings and they'll, that'll be on the agenda. Okay. The third item this evening is the request of NNR properties to have the property located at 1438 North Smith Street, tax map ID 169LK001.01 rezoned from C1 Tourism Commercial District and R1 Residential District to RT1 Residential Townhouse District. Mr. Howell. Yes, member of this Planning Commission. Uh, so this rezone is from, basically is a split zone. It's C1 and R1 at, at this moment. Uh, they're wishing to uh, go to an RT1 to, be con to construct four attached townhome units on approximately 0 0.2 acres, which is roughly around 12,000 square feet, with a proposed density of 14.28 dwelling units per acre with the adjacent residential density is currently at 4.25, 4.5 dwelling units per acre. Uh, the site is surrounded by, sing, by single unit residential dwellings and commercial use. Surrounding development includes small suburban lots, one or two story dwellings with, no, with on-site parking with moderate intensity commercial uses. 
RPA had no concerns with location, height, nor lighting. The proposed site plan show four parking spaces off North Smith Street, two, two spaces adjacent to Unit 4, with four additional garage parking for a total of 10 spaces on the lot. The trash receptacles will be placed on North Smith Street for easy pickup. Fire apparatus turnaround are not required due to reduction of, of lot length from landscape requirements. Normally, when you have uh, 150 feet or more uh, of length, you have to have a turnaround for fire apparatus access. These being four uh, units themselves will require an FPA sprinkler system, so that, that has uh, reduced the concerns of the fire department as well. <clears throat> this would be considered a down zone as well from the amount of uses that RT1 allows with only nine permitted uses uh, allowed in this, within this zone. <laughs> It does fit the requirements. I know this is a very small lot. Once again, Ms. Andy, <laughs> it does meet our zoning requirements, though. Thank you. And what is the proposed density? I believe it's 14.28. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And if there's anyone from the applicant who would like to speak on behalf. Uh, thank you, Mike Price, MAP Engineers, uh, same address as before. Uh, if it's all right, I'd like to pass these out to give you an idea of exactly what's being proposed to be constructed. Sure. So as you can see, this is a, um, a very nice uh, townhouse proposal, I think, in terms of being an asset to the community. It's sort of in a, a little bit of a different situation than our previous case that we just discussed. So we're directly behind McDonald's in the drive through Directly across the street, we've got the hotel. And then we've got residential then as you go further down North Smith Street. So given that, uh, and this property in through here is part of the other property where the Provino's restaurant used to be located and so has that development continues or redevelopment once we get underway on that this property is also one that he wanted to look at putting in a uh, residential use for uh, so these units would be approximate in value of around 300,000 uh, each is what uh, what we anticipate uh, we did meet with staff, and uh, out of that, we changed our design to what you see here to reflect some of the comments that we got from staff. And we think it was an improvement as it relates to how we were able to uh, fit the, the, the buildings in through here, create the parking, and uh, provide what we think would be an asset to the community. We did surround the entire property with, with landscaping that you see, uh, with the single drive. And uh, again, I think this is, a, it's, it's, it's a down zone because we are commercial as well as residential, uh, what we've got out through here. So if there's any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer those. All right, thank you. And what was the approximate square footage of the new? So the, the square footage each of these buildings is 23 feet wide, and I think we're around 30 feet deep. So you're looking at around 1,100, I think, square footage. About 1,400. 1,400 about is where we would end up being on these. Thank you. Mr. Hill, this C1, are you aware if it was in the border region prior? That's something I didn't check on because it has the split zone on it. It currently has that R1, I think it is, in C1. What property, what's the business that's on it currently? It's, it's vacant. It's vacant, it's vacant okay. now. It, it, there's a little drainage swell that runs just beside the McDonald's and behind the former Provino's. And so it's all connected as, as it relates to this property. So this is a portion that we're separating out from the commercial development that will be taking place on the Provino, old Provino site. I see. Oh, I see the trees now on the satellite map, my mistake. Yep. Okay. Any questions from the Planning Commission? I do. So uh, I'm just going to be, that density is even higher than the last one that you brought forward that I didn't uh, I didn't vote in favor of so this is even a higher density and I also have concern with those four parking spots that you will back out of or back into off of North Smith and I didn't know if you wanted to ask the audience first if there's anybody that wanted to come up but those are my two concerns sure. now that picture 
a lot. I also like the size. You only have three units. Would you consider dropping one and do three units so you can adjust the parking off of North Smith? Those are my comments and questions. Okay. You don't have to answer now, but. Those are the comments. Got it. Thank you. All right. If there's anybody from the audience who would like to speak in favor or in opposition of the uh, development, feel free to approach. Don't mind giving your name and address, please. Uh, Jerry Grant, uh, 4236 Beaver Hill Road in Pikeville, Tennessee. I'm here on behalf of my mom. She owns that property right next to okay. the, uh, I guess, the lot we're talking about. Welcome to East Ridge. Uh, yeah, I was <laughs> raised here. <laughs> but uh, we, we, were ju we just didn't know what was, this is what they're. Yes. Well, this is the this rendering shows three. I believe the proposal said four, so that's one moment. One thing we would like to clarify, but yes, that's what we were handed. Okay. And I guess what we was concerned about was the drainage and you know the in and, in and outs of it all. Sure. Actually, Mr. Hill, if you don't mind addressing that, and there have been a couple of questions about drainage. Are they required to make sure there's no additional water um, with residential? Is there a permeability question? How is runoff handled from the city standpoint? From the city standpoint, it's less than an acre, so land disturbance permits aren't required for that, si uh, that size of a site. Uh, of course, you know, uh, best management practices would state, you know, any property on your, any water on your property, you know, keep it there. Don't have it, you know, encroach on anybody else's. So I think that's something that would be addressed as, you know, if, if this was approved through this board and this body and uh, city council that we'd address at that time. Sure. Thank you. I'm sorry. Can continue. I just want to make sure we got that. Oh no, that, that's fine. I just we just wanted to know what we saw that little sign in there, and there's concern. They said it had to come to a commission meeting. So, sure. The um, if it helps you, I know it's tiny, but it shows four units that look really similar, and uh, you are you're welcome to this one. I'll get speed up the request process a little bit. All right. So anybody else who'd like to speak in favor or opposition? Yep. Mr. Price, you wanted to respond. So uh, a couple things. So a lot of times when calculating density for developments, we have properties where the density is reduced uh, because of the fact that there's land that we can't utilize. This is sort of the perfect footprint. So you sort of get penalized from a density standpoint because you, you're able to fit everything in that you're, you're trying to do and there's no excess land that is either not utilized or can't be, uh, can't be developed. Uh, but to the question that was put before me uh, going to three, we could, we could take down to three and then take unit four and put four parking spaces down there then you don't have to have the four then on uh, North Smith Street. And then I think that would address that particular concern. And then we would not be putting any stormwater runoff on um, your mother's property on, on that. So there is a drainage ditch actually, again, that runs between uh, the McDonald's, Perfino's in the back of this site. And that's where the runoff would be directed to. So it would not be directed on anyone else's property. So. If, uh, if this body feels that going to three and taking the parking off of North Smith Street is the right thing to do, then we're certainly amenable to that. Okay. Mr. Howell, I'm sorry. How does that change the density? Yeah, I was going to ask, I think three of us are going to ask the same question. It's around 10. Around 10, okay. Around 10. And if they make an amendment um, in the proposed vote, the amendment could restrict the number of units being built on the property, right, as part of the rezoning application? Okay, thank you. Correct. Right. All right. Seeing no further discussion, any further questions from the commission? No. All right. Roll call, please. I'm sorry. No, we have to have a we have something to vote on, don't we? <laughs> I will entertain a motion, and then we'll have a roll call. I make the motion to approve with condition of it only being three units. And the, the no parking on um, 
North, North Smith Street. Okay. I'll yep. second that. Okay. We have a motion by Commission Member Williams and a second by Commission Member Witt to approve with a restriction that there be three units permitted on the development and no parking with direct access to North Smith Street. Can I get a roll call, please? Vice Chairperson Howe? Yes. Commission Member Cornelius? Yes. Commission Member Williams? Yes. Commission Member Witt? Yes. Chairperson Tuggle? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, and the final request under new business is the request of Verna Knight to have the property located at 205 Eads Street, tax map ID number 1580A022.03, rezoned from R1 Residential District to R2 Residential Duplex District. Mr. Howell. Yes, members of the Planning Commission, this would rezone from R1 to R2 uh, to use the existing single family dwelling as a duplex. Proposed resi residential density would be 8.6 DUs per acre with adjacent resi residential density at 4.16 dwelling units per acre. Uh, the site is surrounded by single unit residential uses, multifamily. Uh, the surrounding development consists of one acre, I'm, so, I'm sorry, consists of one and two story single family uh, residential with on site parking and apartments. There is no concern with location, lighting, or height. Uh, there are some legal non-conforming duplexes in the area that are currently zoned R1. Rezoned to uh, R2 would allow also allow the use of a short-term vacation rental within this structure. Uh, would, assault, would also require the two units to be separated by one hour floor ceiling uh, assembly uh, with separate service panels and meter base uh, with uh, means of egress and egress requirements out of it. I don't, I'm not sure if the applicant realizes that or not, but uh, I wanted to bring that up. Sure, and it's immediate condition. It could not be used for short stay. Not as short stay. It's, it's not require some on changes. R1, yes. Sure. All right, great. And are you speaking on behalf of the applicant? I am the applicant. Okay, great. Thank you. If you um, don't mind giving your name and address, please. Say, can I give you the Sure, password? absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, yeah. If you don't mind giving your name and address, please. Verna Knight, 205 Eads Street. And currently, uh, uh, property is uh, zoned as an R1, wanting it to be changed to an R2 to allow short term and um, long term can be done currently, but short term rental. Okay. So the property boundaries, uh, there are currently R2s in the area as well as an R3 that is 200 feet from where I currently live. And um, the property is about 400 square feet, the basement, and it has uh, parking for four parking spaces, including one that's um, up top that allows for parking. There are several R2s in the area and a large R3 that's 200 feet away. Across the street from me is a potential new development across the street. It's currently on sale for over $2 million that is proposed to be um, condos or townhomes, which will be directly across the street from me. Um, the target audience for what we're, uh, it's owner occupied space. So we're looking at traveling nurses, workers for, or that are contract workers for companies. And then of course with Camp Jordan being right down the road, like 100 feet, uh, families that are visiting for sporting events, conferences, festivals, that type of thing. Um, also in the package you will see the um, short term rentals in East Ridge currently and some of the stats on what's allowed in Eastridge. Hmm. I um, also see you have t my neighbors on my right and my left have s already gave me letters of approval, their approval for me to allow this to be a R to, uh, rezone to an R2. Um, my property is going to be managed by iTrip Chattanooga, which is a management company, and they have um, things in place that make it 
very amenable to having it as a short-term rental, such as monitoring uh, for noise, occupancy monitoring, um, and they manage like 30 properties in the area, and Donna Morgan is here to talk more about that, what they do as iTrip Chattanooga. Sure, thank you. And just as a point of clarity, um, the Planning Commission provides an opinion on the suitability of the land for that use. Um, obviously, the, the adjustments that would need to be made to support short stay, if that was one of the intended uses, is something you want to discuss with the staff, because there are separate restrictions on that use apart from the zoning, as he was saying, with a fire barrier and utilities, et cetera. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if there is a, a vote to send this through, that doesn't necessarily mean the property can automatically be used for that. The city has other restrictions as well. If you don't mind, if I could just sure. step in real quick. So this is a single family dwelling, zoned R1. I, I got to stand back as a building inspector now and, and, and preach this. He's also our building inspector, so, so he will, yes. When you design a single family dwelling versus what a duplex should be designed at, it's totally different. When I'm talking about unit separation, this means a one hour rated firewall between these horizontal units now. Normally in a, regular, a duplex, a vertical one, you'd have a one hour rated firewall. So with this, if, if this body elects to rezone this R2, that will have to be turned into a duplex, not a single family dwelling, separate service meters, firewall, horizontal penetration for your, I'm sorry, your horizontal uh, member there, you know, uh, your means of egress, uh, your emergency means of egress, your smoke detectors in it. I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's quite a bit. It's very hard to take a single family dwelling and convert that into an R2, a duplex. But that's, that's just me standing back and saying that. Now, you can have all the money in the world and do what you want with your house, and you can eventually do it. It's just going to be pricey. Right. So if the Planning Commission makes a decision on the zoning, uh, there's a gentleman named Michael Howell who's a building inspector who would be happy to discuss those requirements with you, and uh, they can give you some further information. So. There is, I currently put it in a, um, a door, a separate door, and there are emergency, and I'm, my basement does already have a fire alarm in it. Great. Then it's the basement space system. And as I understand it, to be, be, to be able to do short-term rental, it has to be zoned as an R2. Yes. So there's a, there's a melding of the lines between R2 duplex and a short-term rental. Right. Yes, and that is a zoning request, and that's certainly what we're here to address. And I didn't want to get this commission bogged down in, in the, the details of fire separation, but I wanted to explain to you that if the commission votes yes, that doesn't mean it's now a short stay. That just means that it's a conforming use that would allow a short stay. So, All right, is there any discussion from the commission before we speak to the audience? Sure, feel free. If you don't mind giving your name and address, please. Sure. Donna Morgan, uh, 558 Austin Drive, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37419. Uh, a couple things I would just ask to Verna. Uh, she's already talked about the R2s and R3s that are in the neighborhood. There's an R3 like 200 feet away with 104, 104 units there. I actually think it's a Section 8 uh, complex there. There's several other R2s in the vicinity as well. Uh, no additional traffic would be expected on this um, because it, Verna lives by herself, so if she had other residents living with her, there'd be just as many cars coming in and out there. Um, she has installed the wall completely there. There uh, are egress standards from there's the door coming in separate from the outside, a window, and then also access to go outside the garage. Completely agree. There's more things on the thing. Good thing it's brand new construction. She's been sure. there maybe 60 days or something. So it definitely is up to code from a brand new construction, but understand we'd have to go through that. Um, as she said, professional managed by iTrip Chattanooga. Uh, started the company uh, June of last year uh, and had the Chattanooga market. Now I have the North Georgia market. I manage 30. Uh, we have 10 team members. We're all local. We can be in any of our places within 30 minutes there. I share my information with all the neighbors so people can get in contact with me. I already have one complex in uh, East Ridge up on Atomic Ridge that I'm managing and working on another one there. As she said, the biggest thing that we bring as iTrip as a professional property management is that noise occupancy. Um, uh, the noise and the um, the noise and the uh, smoke, um, so that we can make sure there's no parties going on and that no one uh, is exceeding the limits of the individuals that are there. Obviously, I have full liability, and once again, I can be to the property in 30 minutes there. Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you, Thank you very much. You. All right. Any questions from the members of the planning commission? I 
appreciate the neighbors that have given you permission to do this, but I also received calls from people in the area that were not for this. So just wanted you to be aware that not everybody up there is. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Anyone? A uh, member of the public would like to speak, if you don't mind. Um, if you can give your name and address, please. Sure. My name is Heather Dewsbury, and I am at 207 Eads Street, right next to Verna. Um, we fully give support. We've been there about the same time as Verna has, and have no, I don't think it would negatively impact um, our home life at all. We live in our home. Um, Verna keeps up her home very well, parks in the garage, an extra car or two wouldn't, wouldn't affect it at all. Um, totally trust her judgment on who she would allow into her home since she does live there also. Um, it wouldn't be like a, a typical thing. I mean, it would be just somebody a little more stable or um, you know, short term or whatever it is. But I just wanted to give my full support for her um, in that area. We do have the apartment building up there. This is a lot of less impact than um, what the apartments do or what another large development would do. So. Um, I fully support it. Great. Thank you. We rarely get neighbors in support, so thank you. Anyone else who'd like to speak in support or opposition? Okay. Feel free. And if you don't mind, once you get to the microphone, give your name and address, please. Planning Commission members, thank you. Michael Howe, good to see you again, buddy. I own the property, I'm Edward Wooten, I live at 100 Fawn Drive, also own the property at 101 Fawn, the property acreage at, at the end of Douglas, and uh, the big Roman brick right behind yours on Noah Reed. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I just found out about this this afternoon, that's the reason I came. As soon as I seen that duplex, I took one look at that house and said, how are you gonna put a duplex here? <laughs> you know? sure. But, uh, I'm now I'm a little bit concerned about the party atmosphere of that house right there if it becomes a short-term rental. First, uh, uh, like I said, this is the first time I've heard about it. It was just probably about 4.30 this afternoon, so I thought I'd come up here and see about it. Uh, I got the property at 220 Eads, which is diagonally across the street about 200 feet. Sure. Uh, I spent a lot of money fixing that house and uh, uh, you know, bringing it to the standards that we, we need over here in East Ridge. And I'm really grateful for what's happening over here in East Ridge. You know, everything's coming up and looking a lot better than what it was, you know. So I'd like to keep it there. Uh, while I was uh, uh, working on this house on Eads Street, we used to take bets how many police cars or fire trucks we'd see rolling up the hill to the Dogwood Apartments every day. You know? So I didn't want to have any more of that in this area. So. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's all I'm going to leave the, uh, the, co the commission with, just see what you guys, you know, will see. But, yeah, there's obviously more people, and I've been contacted by more people out there in opposition to sure. it. Uh, I think they're here, too, right back there. Yeah. So if they would like to speak, you can take sure. them. But, uh, and if you I'll also just, wanted to chat with the property manager and get her contact information just in case it passes, that way if there is an issue, you could address it with her as well. I mean, you know, there's sure. not much I can do if it passes, you know, once it's right. in. Right. Well, you sure. Know. It still goes before two readings maybe at City Council. Maybe I come at you and do the same thing. Maybe make a party house across the street. <laughs> so. Sure. I, I will say, <laughs> although I am neither in favor or against this, uh, it is one bedroom, one bath, so it would be a very small party. So uh, <laughs> this is the proposed space yeah, is very small. But yes, I understand. I'm, I'm certainly. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh -huh. uh, sure, if you'd like to approach and once you reach the microphone, name and address, please. My name is Billy Pickett. I live at 212 Eads. I also own the property at 6805 Martha Avenue and my lot connects all the way to the back of it. So I own a lot of that. Sure. With my dad's hat, house sitting at 220 that he owns now. I do not agree with this whatsoever. You have flying cars. You have children trying to walk with no sidewalk. You meet cars head on. I've been there. I'm 59. I just turned 59. I was born and raised there. I have a, I just, I do not agree with this. You hear cars that are just so ungodly they'll knock you out of your bed i get up at two o'clock in the morning to go to work you 
if it's if it's not those cars, it's boom, 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 until it pushes you out of bed. And then you have, like he said, fire trucks, ambulances, police cars, constantly something going on out there now that we used to never have. You can't leave your door unlocked. It's virtually impossible. And there's just too much traffic, too many children for any more. Somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to get hurt. To be the single home and, and, and rent it if she wanted to, I understand that. But to make it something it's not a whole different ballgame. That's going to be constant moving. Sure. But I thank you for listening to me and taking into consideration not to do this. Sure. Thank you very much. And uh, just to clarify, the, the request is for and to be separated in two units with the upstairs, which is a three bedroom, two bath um, residence to be occupied by the primary applicant. And the part to be used as a rental unit is a one bedroom, one bath, which I believe is downstairs. And so that's the request is not to turn this into a duplex as you're thinking where there's two halves and two doors and all that. This is turn the basement unit into, um, into a separate rental, but I have a question. Is, is all that's in the basement a bedroom and a bath? There's no kitchenette or anything like that? There is a kitchen. I have a picture. Um, uh, there is a kitchenette um, because if it's a long term rental, it is. Um, you have mine. Uh -huh. Is there a traveling nurse, one person, or a, a family that's at Camp Jordan. Those are my, my target audience. And this is like a picture of the yeah. kitchen. If you want to start on that end, we'll just pass it down. Okay. And I'm sure you guys are aware you, you were calling short term rentals R2, which is defined as duplex, as opposed to creating a category for. Right. Short term rental. Right. Yes. We cannot decide if something is a short term rental. That's not up to this body. We can just determine if it's a conforming zoning. I installed the, the last pictures of the door that I installed that separates the upstairs from the downstairs. Sure. Already has a fire, a smoke alarm. Well, oh, she's looking at my last file question. So even with this, it's still going to have to have that fire fire barrier. Two separate occupancies. Okay. So I just want the applicant to understand that even if this gets rezoned, it's not going to be able to be occupied as a duplex on the downstairs until the fire rating, that fire barrier is put in, which he said was going to be very expensive. So you need to consider that. I'm not sure what that would cost, but I don't think that's going to be cheap. Yeah, the restrictions in East Ridge on short stays are pretty aggressive, I think you would say. They, um, they do require not just the zoning requirement, but there is a requirement that it be treated essentially as a duplex. And the, the fire restrictions and things are what we were trying to make sure you understood. And that's not, again, that's not up to us. We didn't create that. Uh, we are not in charge of the, the short stay rentals. We're only talking about zoning conformity. And R2 allows short stays as one of those things. But since that's something you brought up, we just want to make sure that you understood that. I think we have one more person that's, who. And that's the safety, safety for everyone in both, both dwellings. Yeah. If the fire starts downstairs, the last thing you want us to do is go straight upstairs to the other resident. I believe we have one more resident who was wanting to speak. Yes. If you'd approach, please. If you don't mind, wait until you get the microphone and give us your name and address, please. <laughs> Steve Pickett, and I own a house at 212 Eads and uh, 6805 Martha. And, uh, man, like my wife was telling y'all, there's people, they 
I don't know how many times East Ridge Law has set up there and caught them. They're just about all four wheels will leave the ground coming out of them apartments up there. And if you add more up there, all you're doing is adding more fuel to the fire. And there was one kid got killed. He come up over that hill and didn't make that turn. He went right off in that patch of woods where that sign's at up there that you've got. And he hung from that tree up there and it killed him. Sure. And I'm sure. It's just a, a, a bad thing. There's, no, there's nothing through there for the kids. And they come in bouncing basketballs and stuff all the time, going down there to the park to play and stuff. And it's, it's a dangerous road, as it is. Yeah. And if you add another two or three or four places to stay there, all you're doing is adding fuel to a fire, and it's going to be bad. Sure. And just to clarify, um, R2 does not allow for apartments. This would be to allow one additional unit in that house. So we're talking about adding one unit. So just FYI, there is no plan or request to add apartments, as that's not possible within an R2. So. Uh, so then there's just going to be the one person that lives there. Uh, one bedroom, one bath. So, yeah, not very many people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, the zoning would allow there to be a duplex, um, but considering this is a new construction home that's already existing, I don't think the plan is to remove that and put in a duplex. So. Yeah, I mean, right, if, if, if this body approves that R2, and something ever did happen to that house, burned for whatever reason and, and exceeded 50%, now you have the opportunity to put a duplex just keep right. that in mind so it's sure yeah, you are allowed a single family in an r2 and multi-family right they can have duplex. two housing units on that property at infinitum uh, but they could not have apartments on that property correct right yes. any other questions okay now i will entertain a motion to approve amend or deny the request to pass this along to the city council for a vote Don't all speak at once. I'll make a motion to deny. Okay. I have a motion to deny. Do we have a second? Or any other motion? I'll second the motion. I'm just concerned with the safety. We have a motion to deny that is from Commission Member Witt and seconded by Commission Member Williams. And can we have a roll call on that motion, please? And a vote of yes would mean that we are denying to clarify. Vice Chairperson Howell? No. Commission Member Cornelius? No. Commission Member Williams? Yes. Commission Member Witt? Yes. Chairperson Tuggle. No. So we don't have a motion to deny. That also means that we do not have a request to approve. Um, so we do not have anything to carry to City Council at this point. So is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Okay. We have a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Member Cornelius and a second from Commissioner Member Howe to approve. Can we get a good roll call, please? Vice Chairperson Howe? Yes. Commission Member Cornelius? Yes. Commission Member Williams? No. Commission Member Witt? No. Chairperson Tuggle? Yes. Okay, so this will move to the City Council for two readings, and then it will be their determination whether or not this continues. And if you would like to uh, speak to codes enforcement a little bit more before that, uh, you will want to be amply prepared before the city council meeting. Okay. And there being no further new business, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>